Welcome to Bitch Talk, booze interviews straight from the heart of San Francisco. I'm Erin. That's Ange. Hi. That's Char. Hello. You can find us at bitchtalkpodcast.com where you can sign up for our monthly e-news. For behind the scenes videos and two minute clips of our interviews, head to our YouTube channel and subscribe. You can find us every other Thursday morning at 9.30 a.m. at bff.fm. And if you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the love of God, do it. It really helps. What's up, bitch talkers? It's Aaron on Zoom. Uh, I, I'm live from Austin, Texas. Uh, where are you, Ange? Where are you, Char? Home. In the most boring see, of locations. Well, like, leisure. Oh, my background is this nice I, little I love vacation it. spot. In you're, the, you're in paradise. In, in the heat of Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I'm in the heat of Orange County and it's brutal. How hot is it there? Because it's well, it's interesting like, here. You know, 80s, but this house is like a it just it just it's like a sauna. It just insulates. So it's hard to keep the house cool. Like I go outside in the shade to cool off. So hmm. but it's not hot right now. It gets hot like, you know, from one to five or six. But anyway, it's fine. Everywhere I go now is like heat wave. We went to solving and it was the hottest. They said it was the hottest there that it's been in a long time. Portland was 118. So it's just like, <laughs> right. I'm just meant to sweat. Right so now. you're just bringing the heat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it was so brutal. Oh, my God. You should go to different places and just see. Maybe how I hot. should. I should actually go to San Francisco because I heard they're having the coldest July. It's of freezing. <laughs> Uh, I actually I I thought about that. I thought about Aaron the other day. I was in the city on Monday. I worked in the studio and then I had dinner with my cousin and the two of us met up and I was um, we went to some place on Fillmore and I was freezing because I'm like coming from like Sacramento or Fairfield. I'd like flip flops, no jacket, short sleeve shirt. And I like walk in and I'm like, "Uh, can we? sit indoors but everywhere all the surrounding cities are having heat waves but san francisco's in an igloo (laughs) (laughs) seriously no joke Uh, yeah my sister's like how is it down there and i'm like it's hot and muggy but it's manageable she's like it's freezing i'm like sorry i'm in shorts and a tank top (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. and actually it's um it's cooler quote unquote cooler in texas than it's ever been so and raining. And I'm like, can we get some of your rain up to California? That'd be great. Um, yeah, we're, we're here visiting a uh, family that we haven't seen and, and friends since we haven't seen since the end of 2019. And um, the flight was fine. No, no assholes. Totally cool. No mask, mask holes. Mm-hmm. Um, you had to keep your mask on the entire time, which is totally fine um except for eating or drinking uh as soon as we got to texas we went to one of our favorite mexican restaurants called joti garcia's uh super old school uh you only can pick two things enchiladas or fajitas <laughs> and then what comes with that is like rice and beans they is this dallas you- this is fort worth oh uh, straight to fort worth okay so yeah. um yeah yeah straight to fort worth Nachos here are very different. Nachos are like single uh, chips, bigger chips with beans and cheese melted on top. So they're individual nachos, which are awesome. So Joe T's does it that way with a little like spicy jalapeno salsa on top. And I'll just say that our waitress, our waitress came up and uh, I don't know why Portland came up, but she's from Portland and moved to Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and uh, interesting. <laughs> And she's like, yeah, you know, I, I just, I just don't like the homeless. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what I got served. The uh, homeless. I landed. Oh, she's like, I don't really like the homeless. How do y'all feel? And uh, I just didn't say anything because I just wanted to eat dinner and I was with Jeff's family. Right. Um, Good like, call. You, you really, yeah. You really want to engage in that conversation? <laughs> You're maturing, Erin. I'm really proud of Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It wasn't worth it. Um, True. So that was fun. I just looked at Jeff and I was like, 
Was that the person that you text that you texted us? Oh, I've only met one asshole so far, so I'm having a drink. Was that the person? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a Joe Cheese. <laughs> and then Jeff was thrown off because he's like, if she's from Portland, why does she have a Texas accent? So <laughs> a little confusing. Um, so yeah, exactly. So Joe Tees, uh, we were in, oh, then there's a place his parents like, which we've been before. And I'll just sum- summarize as um, it felt like uh, we were we were having breakfast, lunch with cops because there were like five or six cops when we got when we uh, were eating at this place. And the cops in at least in Fort Worth are way different than cops in San Francisco. They've got two guns on their hip. They are fully like bulletproof vests walking in like just swat shit on when they walk into the restaurant. And I'm like, I guess we're safer. Um, Are you sure they weren't just insurrectionists? That's what January 6th (laughs) looked like. (laughs) They could have been there. I could have just been Texans. Seriously. (laughs) They all rolled up in their separate big old SUV uh, Fort Worth CT CTU. Yeah. Crime. What was it, Jeff? Crime tracking unit. And we're like, okay. <laughs> easy, easy does it, Fort Worth. I was just, yeah, I, I don't know. I was like, there's no reason to come in a restaurant fully armed. Like, really, zero. Um, but then Jeff's mom went over and thanked them for their service. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. You needed to balance out the table. You guys balanced out the table like a seesaw. Yeah, seriously. I, <laughs> I was just, I was just like, I'm just eating my bagel. <laughs> just eating my bagel. <laughs> uh, so that's been Fort Worth so far. Uh, and then, um, oh yeah, we went to our favorite dive bar, Yups, which was the opposite of everything else. We went there in 2016. There's smoking inside. There's karaoke at that time, and I did do karaoke by myself. Um, but this time we walked in. And it seemed like there were way more people of color and LGBTQ folks. But then you also had like Blue Lives Matter and Navy SEALs flags up. And then this guy that was doing karaoke called Navy Steve was in charge. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it was. I love that. Yeah, it was all of the opposites in one under one roof. And then Jeff got yelled at by our bartender because he asked for a Lone Star, which is like the Texas beer. And she was like, no one drinks Lone Star. No Texans drink Lone Star in Texas. And he's like, what? So that was fine. <laughs> she was fine. We think she was coked up. It's fine. Um, huh, I, feel like, I feel like karaoke might be what unites us all. Yeah. Yeah, there were interesting music picks for sure. Um, a little bit of everything. Uh, but yeah, that was yups. I'm sure we'll go back before we leave to see what else happens when we're there. Um, but yeah, Austin's still Austin, but uh, the tech folks have arrived because um, we were like, let's look at houses again. You get more for your money, but it's still pretty expensive now, which sucks. <laughs> and I guess because the tech folks are coming, it's like you're bidding again uh, against Californians and the Californication of Texas. So uh, we've, we've heard a lot of that and uh, we've talked to people and I have to set them straight a little bit. This is where I'm like, can you please tell everyone that the people from California aren't really Californians. They came to California 10 years ago to follow tech. They bought their houses, they made their money and now they're coming to wherever the tech's going. They're not Californians. Mm-hmm. Please tell, please spread the word. Um, and yeah, they're kind of terrible. And also our first uh, night in Austin, we think we were sort of being, uh, not coerced, but invited to maybe having a threesome. Uh, Oh, girl or guy? Girl. Um, Yeah, it was really interesting. She was just looking for friends, quote unquote, um, because it's really hard for this person to meet friends and she's in her 40s. But she's been on de- dating. I mean, this. <laughs> that sounds like uh, Angie's new neighbor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. What's her name? 
I have Regina. Uh, the plot oh, yeah. thickens with her too. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to get into that. Go on. No, I'll just wrap this up. But she, uh, there's just a lot going on. She's looking for friends, but she has a longtime partner who she lives with, a, a dude, we think. Uh, she lives with, uh, they live in separate rooms now though. They have a 16 year old. Uh, he's a Trumper. Uh, she wants to have an open relationship. That's what she's doing, but she's just looking for friends, but she's just dating women, <laughs> but she's only looking for friends. It was, we knew what we found out a lot about this person. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say her name. Um, oh, wow. Was she like being flirty? No, and you know, Jeff's the one who started the fucking conversation. So <laughs> I just wanted to go out and have a fucking drink when we got to Austin. And then he starts a whole thing. Uh, <laughs> she ends up giving her his number because while we're here, maybe we can call her. <laughs> Sorry, did I say he? She gave Jeff her number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, uh, it's nice to have options, I guess, you know. Right. So Jeff's like, you know, I think if we just said, hey, you want to come over to our place? She would totally have said yes. And I'm like, well, um, cool. That was the impression he was getting during the conversation. She also leans right. I don't in know. Be in bed or yeah, politically? In bed. <laughs> Maybe she was maybe she was giving you some innuendo, sexual innuendo, like, oh, I lean right. You know, you don't know. I don't. Think, I don't <laughs> that's not what I was getting from that, because then we had a whole conversation about Black Lives Matter. I mean, let me tell you what. I've been, it's a lot of uh, uh, like a lot of green lensing and breathing. <laughs> This you've, been, you've been ducking and diving seriously for once yeah. you don't want to get into it but everybody else wants to get into it with you everyone's just making comments and I'm like do I do I say or I'm on I'm on vacation it's okay I'm just gonna keep moving on uh but other than that it's been cool got my two tattoos just waiting on you and now you did not send me pictures I asked for pictures I will I will fine I just took off the stuff today that's why she wrapped it up right after I'm, I'm getting I'm getting mine for sure. I'm getting mine, the Spanish version, and I'm going to do it after my surgery. <laughs> One thing at a time. All right. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Stephanie Smith. She used to be in the city. Um, love her. She did my big old uh, piece for our friend Valerie um, in honor of her friend Valerie passed away November 18 and uh, had a great dinner last night at this guy's restaurant. It's my sister's friend. His name's Adam. And uh, he was just cool. And then we met cool folks. So, you know, it's all over the place. There was, there has been one, uh, we we're on South Congress Street in Austin, sitting outside because we can, because it's hot <laughs> with misters. And uh, uh, this big old truck was uh, driving up the street. We have to understand like South Congress is, like, uh, I told Jeff, I'm like, I feel like I'm in Berkeley a little bit. So he's driving up. You hear this horn honking, a big old truck with a big old, what do you think's in the back flying around? Well, Trump, uh, Trump one. That's a new flag that I saw in this neighborhood. A Trump one oh, flag. No. Oh. no, I'm surprised it's not that. It was the dump 2024 flag, huge flag. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, rolling up the street. And we just flipped him off. Um, so, so that's been, uh, that's been awesome so far. That's been Texas. We had, we're getting barbecue right after this and at Salt Lake. <gasps> and, yes. uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, I think the, the, Im the important notes that I'm getting is there's, there's a lot of both happening in Texas. And that's what I see at least with people speaking out. It's like, look, it's not just a red state, but. You know, there are those of us that that care and want to make progress. We have a real fighting chance. There's a lot of us here. We just need help. You know, so it's important to just keep up with what's happening in Texas. If you can donate, especially to people that are trying to flip. Uh, we, we have a lot of support, a lot of people that want to make real progress in that state, you know, despite yes. what it looks like. Yes, I 100 percent agree with that, including just parents who are in their 80s and you know i'm sure i've talked about this before but his dad's you know early he's gonna be 81 i think this god next week um 
And he was a forever Republican up until dump 2016 and uh, knew that this was not the way of, you know, the classic quote unquote Republican party, even though there's still a lot of problems with the classic, uh, the throwback Republican party. But um, I mean, he's flipped and we were talking about um, talking about uh, who's going to run for governor next year because that Mm. fucking piece of shit Abbott's Mm -hmm. number is up. By the way, I just, I have to say that, well, I'll go back to Abbott in a minute because I don't need to spend a lot of time there. But, um, you know, he's, they're talking about Beto running. Who knows if that's going to happen? But his dad's like, oh, yeah, we'll vote for him. And, you know, they, they helped uh, canvas for him in 2018. Yeah. 2018 was when he was running for Senate. So that's saying a lot. Wow. Yeah. For, for a guy who's, uh, you know, uh, fought in World War, World War II, babe. Oh, sorry. Vietnam. And, um, is very proud of his country, very proud of Texas, but he's just like, this, this can't go on at all. (laughs) It's all bullshit. And on that note, it's also a really good time when you see an in with somebody that maybe you haven't agreed with your whole life politically right now is a great time to talk to people that you don't necessarily agree with because they're more willing to listen. I feel like, you know, they're feeling just as confused and helpless as we are. So it's a really great time to find a common ground, which, you know, I have two people in my life that I often butt heads with um, and we're having conversations and and I had, you know, another one, even in solving uh, with, with someone, you know, um, that, that was, I considered it to be productive when we can just tell our thoughts and not completely disagree and write each other off. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you have to start somewhere. <laughs> and now's a good time yeah. for these conversations. Yeah. And side note, I had no idea that Greg Abbott was in a wheelchair. Did anyone else know that? No idea. Oh, wow. Maybe did I did you know at one that? point, but I just... wheelchair. He's wheelchair bound. <laughs> It's just the, no idea. the, the, yeah, the, the assholery overcomes, overtakes everything. And I don't remember anything else. Well, I don't think that he wants to claim that part of his life because whenever you see him, it's only chest up. So I think he's, you know, obviously controlling that narrative, which is sad. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what, <laughs> to, to a chest friend or like, if you see Greg Abbott, you can push him over the you can push him over the bridge. <laughs> like, wow. I mean, kind he's of, real. He's real extra right now. Between him and and DeSantis in Florida, it's like the who who's worse? There's no com- yeah, you can't even compare. It's just e- equal. They're equal. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, anyways, and it all has to do, at least in Texas right now, about voting rights. Um, if you don't know what we're talking about, look it up, look up Democrats leaving Texas, <laughs> um, installing a vote, uh, around voting rights, because this is what happens when you have a bully in office and doesn't get reelected. Now he's manipulating all his little fucking puppets to overturn a lot of shit or, or, um, or make up new rules to limit mm-hmm. people and, um, their votes. So pay attention y'all. Um, we keep saying it, but it's that just because Biden won, none of this shit stops. So um, anyways, how was solving, Ange? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring Char back into this conversation yeah. by talking yes. about going to the casino. Sorry, Char. <laughs> oh, of course you did. Well, we went to, yeah, there's a, the Schumach, or for people that don't know, Solving is this quaint little like Danish style town that's about half an hour from Santa Barbara in, in California. Really cute town, uh, really great food, um, fun bars, and the Shumash Casino, which is just a few miles away, uh, is an Indian casino. And it was my first time gambling, obviously, since uh, the quarantine and everything. So I had a lot of fun sitting at the blackjack table. G- gambling in the afternoon is the best, just f- for anybody that doesn't know that table because it's not crowded. The tables are cheap, right. still cheap, and um, and yeah, it was really nice. It, you know, it was the first trip that we took as a family, there's 11 of us uh, without my dad. So obviously that was going to be hard, but we had so much fun. And um, I ended up breaking even, which is 
that's all I could hope for uh, when I'm <laughs> when I'm gambling and, you know, after hours of, of gambling. So that was awesome. But it really made me miss Reno with you guys. So I think mm. we have to please let's do that soon. Um, a- anyway, just a, a few more things. Um, yeah. So they're really good Danish <laughs> pastries. We went to uh, oh, yeah. uh, bakery, which is one of the famous ones. Um, and we had our uh, my room was established as the bar for the family because we had we had of five course. rooms total and one of the suites. So, uh, you know, we would have like parties in my room uh, at the bar. And then we took our infamous sister wives photo, which I had <laughs> which I had joked. I had I'd given you a teaser in a, in a prior uh, basic bitch that um, I had bought for my sisters and my mom and my aunts all matching pajamas. And I wanted us to look like the Von Trapp family, but my sister said we were going to look like sister wives. And uh, I shared the picture with Aaron. What do you think, Aaron? Is it Von Trapp or is it sister wives? <laughs> uh, I think you guys just, it looks like, you know, kind of like an awkward family photo. How about that? <laughs> yeah, totally. It can make it on the calendar. So we were, we all had the same pajamas because we're just stupid like that. Um, and yeah, it was really, really good. It was so much fun. We went wine tasting. Oh, uh, I, I, I love took, wine tasting up there. Mm-hmm, and I took a dip in the yeah. pool and that was, oh, that's like the only physical activity I've had since I hurt my knees. So that was, mm. oh, was so nice to swim, you know, just use my arms, but float and swim and feel mobile and not pain. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it was great. We had, we had such a good time. And so we're already planning our next trip. So, oh, to solving or just somewhere else? No, we're going to go to San Diego next we're just going to keep okay. doing oh. these easy nearby trips, get like a huge, yeah. huge Airbnb right on the beach and hang yeah. out. And we have family in San Diego, too. So, yeah, we're okay. just going to keep planning these easy trips for all of us to do, you know, four days yeah. or whatever. So, yeah, it was awesome. It was good. You know, like all of the first uh, when you lose someone are going to, you know, you're kind of stressed out about, but it ended up being really awesome. Yeah. And all, for all of us to be together, you know, for the first time since that too, was, was so yeah. cool. One of my nephews made it with us also. So yeah, he was my roomie. So uh, it was of awesome. course. Yeah. We were the party room. <laughs> yeah. But I was still waking Sharp. up at 7 a.m. every day to get my mom her medicine and doing all my caregiver responsibilities, even though I was at the casino till 2 a.m. Um, yeah. And I got locked out of the room one morning. My key wasn't working. <laughs> and everyone, two out of the three people that were in my mom's suite snore like lions. So, of course, they're not hearing uh. me knock either. So I had to go to the front desk with my fucking wobble self three times because they gave me new keys. The new keys didn't work. And then finally she was like, here, just have a master key to the, to the room. Oh shit. Like the master key oh. to all of the hotel. Cause I told her, I was like, I was in a robe first of all. And I'm like groggy <laughs> and I'm just like hung over. And I was like, I right. need to get my mom medicine. I was like holding her medicine cup. And I was like, I'm 30 minutes late at this point. My mom just needs her medicine. I need to get in. And she was like, here's the master key. So I had the master key to the, to the whole building for the whole weekend. It was awesome. <laughs> That's oh, man. Funny. But, did yeah. you, did, but did you hit a car in one of those bike things? Did I hit a car? What are you talking about? Yeah. That's what happened when I went to solving when I was a kid with my mom. I hit a car with a bike. <laughs> you know the ones I'm talking about? The ones that have like that overhead thing that kind of hangs down. It looks like a like a cart for like four people. Yes, four. I, I was going to say have... you all pedal together. Yes. Yeah. I didn't see yeah. any of those, but but you know, oh, it, it was okay. so hot. It was like 97 um, it was like pushing a hundred that we didn't even really get to enjoy walking down the street and enjoying the charm of like this little Danish. Yeah. So that's why we were like, let's go to the casino. It's air conditioned, you know? Right. Did your mom play at all? Oh yeah. She likes the penny slots. Uh- <laughs> and, and it, it, she was off with my aunt and my aunt was telling us like, your mom's really picky. Like she would sit down and be like, I don't like this machine. <laughs> she would move oh. from one to another until she felt it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I yep. get it. Shar, how are, how are you? I know it's uh, there's a lot going mm-hmm. on. Eh, you know, all the same. I, I was going to be on a road trip, but then I realized that our um, itinerary was um, taking a COVID tour. 
<laughs> yes. Uh, let's talk about that, by the way. Go for it. You go for it first. Cause, well, yeah. yeah it's cause, real. It's real. Because I, uh, you know, we were supposed to go on a road trip. We were going to, you know, go with my grandma for a 92nd birthday to uh, to Missouri, which her, which, which is where her dad is buried. And so mm-hmm. we were thinking um, doing this road trip and then after that visiting his grave site and then going to like we had plans to go to like Wyoming and go to Yellowstone and Grand Tetons and, you know, maybe hit up. I think I can't remember what else we had on there. It was, we were going to go to um, uh, Santa Fe and uh, ah. Moab. And like we had like all these plans of like this route of going, you know, to to Missouri and then on the way back and stopping at all these places and comes to find out that basically those are all the rural places that don't want to get vaccinated in the south and all these states and yep. all these cities and so it's like spiked covid on the rise everywhere like uh yep. my mom kept sending me articles my brother and i articles all week long of um what went wrong in missouri <laughs> mm-hmm and it's because nobody's getting vaccinated. So yes. And so I was I was joking with um a friend of ours yesterday when I was recording his show, Brian Copeland, and he's just like, oh. and I was telling him all the places that I was that we were gonna go. And he's just like, What you couldn't fit in like India and London on your <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Yep. So so yep. yeah, that, so that got you know pushed to the wayside, maybe somewhere down the road when everybody's healthier and things aren't so crazy we'll try to do that but um we might try to do a a shorter trip uh next week we'll see that's still kind of up in the air so yeah life's up in the air these days Mm -hmm. it sure is Shar. thank you for mentioning (laughs) (laughs) well yeah we were talking we were texting each other uh the other day and um you're like do you know what's happening with you yet and i'm like nope nope yeah (laughs) Yeah, and uh, and also I'm like, there's no pressure behind that. I just don't know because I was like, I don't, you know, there's so many balls in the air right now. Yeah, <laughs> with a lot of different things. So and yeah, I you know, and the COVID shit on top of it all. Um, yeah, COVID in Texas is rising as well. It's really fun to be here during this time. <laughs> and uh, but we're wearing our masks uh, somewhat indoors, or you know, they're. There are places where I'll put it on just because I'm like, I'm just putting this on to walk through the, <laughs> to walk through places, um, to walk through restaurants and stuff. But um, the restaurant we went to last night over the weekend, they had a scare and had to shut down and they just quickly changed. They're really smart. The guy who owns it again um, from San Francisco, he's following a lot of what San Francisco has been doing. He's like on the, he said during the pandemic when it first started, he was on calls uh, with a lot of restaurants in San Francisco because he saw his type. But um He's still not opening up indoors. He's just keeping everything outdoors. And yeah, one of his vaccinated, uh, I don't know, someone on his staff got COVID or at least tested positive for COVID. So they had to shut down uh, for the weekend and they're kind of back to masks. All the servers are wearing masks. And when you walk inside and use the restroom, you have to wear your mask. So, um, yep. So still trying to plan that wedding, everyone. Um, <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, it's like at least for us in uh, like I every Northern we, California. Well, yeah, like I guess yeah, Cal- just I mean like California. At least we know like most of the state is vaccinated, so we're a little bit. We've got like this. I I don't know. It's just like I I guess that's in my head. That's what's kind of getting me, you know, keeping me going. Is it's like at least at least our state is a little bit safer. I don't know how much more, but it just feels like it's a little bit more of a little bit of a safe haven than like leaving the state. Well, yep. well, in LA, they've, they're they requiring masks yep. again indoors because the, the numbers in LA have risen like mm-hmm. to an alarming number. So um, yeah, I mean, it, but the thing is people are vaccinated. So when they get COVID, you know, it's not as a life or death as, as it could be. So I guess that's the difference, right? Like, right. It's, we're just going to be living among the virus, but it won't hit us as hard. So I guess that's a good thing because <laughs> we're vaccinated, but 
still scary. And everyone that's going to your wedding will have been vaccinated. So that's good too. I know. I know. I'm just like, (laughs) we'll see. Yeah. We're still moving forward. So uh, it's cool. Um, So I I just want to wrap up and say thanks. Thanks to the bitch talk team. And and thanks to, um, I hired a friend of mine, a graphic designer, Paula Rojas. And uh, I used to work with her and she's a graphic designer. And I was like, let's, let's do something for our boarding crawl because the film Roadrunner is actually open today. Um, so if you can see it over the weekend, I know this is going to go out Monday or, or see it this weekend. Uh, we encourage you to do that, but it's a documentary about it, Anthony Bourdain's life. But um, thanks to Ange and Char for putting together our 2018 uh, trips around the city to some of Bourdain's favorites and our favorites. Um, there was a lot to weed through and some of it was cut and some of it wasn't because it was good stuff. Um, but we've been given a, given away a book. We, we uh, gave you our little map um, of our crawl and it's been, oh, and we gave you tickets to see uh, the previous screening this, or this last week. So um, it's been a lot of Bourdain, but you know, we really, we really like the guy <laughs> and still feel um, a lot of sadness about his passing, but um, hopefully we, we did him a solid <laughs> and he would approve well, of, of what we did. So, well, I want to do a part two. We were talking about doing a part two. There's so many other yeah. places that we couldn't hit up. So I'm still willing yeah. if you guys are. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Well, it sounds, Although, like you'll yeah. be, it sounds like Andrew will like be able to you know actually walk with us without a pimp cane in the coming. Yes. Days. And I'll be able to actually do the pub crawl <laughs> and not have to take a car from one place to the other. Yeah. 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 Um, Shout out to Andrew's knee because it's going to get, <laughs> gonna get re- <laughs> redone again. <laughs> again, again. But actually, it's not just to clarify it's actually not my ACL that they're working on it's the meniscus because I have it my ACL is torn but so is my meniscus so we have to clean up the meniscus and that's what my surgery is going to be and hopefully he said I might not even need an ACL I guess people exist without ACLs so how much PT are you gonna have to do oh a lot of therapy but or physical therapy but um, he said it's a six to eight week um healing process, but I'll be, it's a, it's an outpatient surgery. Unlike the ACL, if I have to redo the redo of my ACL, he said it would be a two-part surgery because I have screws in there from the first one. They have to take out the screws, do a bone graft. Like it's this whole horrible thing. So I'm hoping that I will not have to do that. I'm hoping that once he fixes the meniscus, my knee will be mobile to the degree that I need it to be. Cause he's like, let's face it. We're not going to be in pickup basketball games or soccer games in our, at our age. He's like, but with the things that you like doing, he's like, if this surgery, you know, works, you won't need to fix your ACL. So. Wow. So fingers okay. crossed. Yeah. Bike riding going to be cool. Bike riding, swimming, running. He said, even he said stairs will take a little longer because the stairs are hard on your hardest on your knees, but mm. yeah, hiking and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Walking from bar to bar. I know. I just, <laughs> need to make it. I just need to make, well, you know, it was funny. Aaron, I was like, will I be able to dance by October 14th? Cause I have a wedding that I need to dance at. And he would like kind of <laughs> laughed at me and he was like, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's like, you'll be walking. Mm. I was like, whatever I can dance now. Of course I'll be able to dance. It's fine. You can chair dance. That's always my favorite. Dude, when we were at the blind spotting uh, after after party, me and my sister were dancing all night. So <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Uh, that probably paid tribute to the, the pain. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. Did, did you have the scan the next day? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. She was so it was, hungover. It wasn't torn until that night. <laughs> Right. That's when the damage actually happened. <laughs> We're like, why is this meniscus so cloudy? Uh, <laughs> the meniscus was drunk too. Yeah. He, oh couldn't, my God. he couldn't see through the, through the whiskey and the tequila. He's like, why does it smell like alcohol? Uh, it's a rare disease I have. Very rare. Oh my God. Anyway. Oh, I miss you guys. Miss you One too. One day we'll, we'll be back in person again. We didn't do moment um, of pleasure. Are we out of time? Oh yeah. 
No, let's do moment of pleasure. We got to keep remembering that. We got to do with our guests too. Our, our happy ending slash. Our ha- of AKA pleasure. happy ending. Yes. Well, you go first since you brought it up. Oh. <laughs> well, I well I have finally started picking up the ukulele again. I haven't played in months and months. I haven't played basically since uh, April, since my mom. Uh, had a, got a head injury in April. And I and since then, I've bought a, a new strap. I bought a capo, like in the hopes that it would inspire me to pick it up. And, he, you know, it's like when you're stressed or feeling grief or whatever, it's just you're just crippled by it. You know, I just stare at it all day. So I finally picked it up the other day and it felt so good. I felt like this warmth over my whole body mm-hmm. and it just felt so healing. And I'm like, why the fuck don't I do this every day? So I've been playing for the past few days and it feels so good. And I feel like invigorated. So that's my moment of pleasure. That's great. Cause we're going to ask, we're going to ask you to play at the wedding anyways. Oh, I'm not on. doing enough. I'm not doing enough. Okay. <laughs> Thank She's you. She's actually, you're going to have to actually play while you're doing <laughs> your officiating. You, you want me to make yep. it a song, the whole, the whole thing into a song. <laughs> Okay. No, no, no. We'll talk about that later. Talk about it later. Oh, you're joking, right? No. No, I'm not joking. No, I'm not going to we'll play. We'll talk anyway. later. I'm not we'll playing. Later. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> Char, yeah, now I'll, you made my turn, Char. my moment of pleasure. Now I'm I'll, riled up. Oh, it's a moment of terrible. <laughs> moment of rage. I'll go. I uh, So I mentioned earlier that, um, you know, my grandma is uh, turning 92 next week. So uh, last Jeez. night... Last night um, or yesterday, uh, her sister who comes to Fairfield with her with her daughters, like uh, I guess because they get their medicine from Travis Air Force Base or something like that, and so they oh, come shit. they come out here like every three months or something like that. And so um, my cousin, you know, said, "Oh, we're you know on the fifteenth, we're going to be in in at Travis. You know, like would you like to meet up for dinner?" And so I brought my grandma from Sacramento here and. Uh, uh, her and her sister who are, you know, her sister is in her eighties. My grandma's turning 92 and, you know, seeing, seeing each other is always kind of, you know, special for them because they're kind of going through like kind of the same stages of life. And, mm. um, so, uh, uh, and it, we chose a place that was right near my brother's place. And it just so happened that my brother was getting off of work and the boys, uh, you know, uh, Schmutz was done with piano. And so all the, all the stars aligned and um, we were all able to have a dinner and we made it kind of like a early uh, birthday dinner for my grandma for her birthday with her sister. So um, it was a nice little thing. And then she was so happy and she was, she had such a good time. And yesterday before she went to bed, she's like, I had such a nice birthday. I was like, it's not your birthday yet. <laughs> You're like, we're just starting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, mm. so it's, it's stuff like that, that um, yes. It's a it, it's a, a moment of pleasure of you know seeing stuff like that, and that moments like that make it worth everything that you're doing for her. Oh, right? for it's sure, like, for, that's for like sure. A day, every day, all day, you're you're helping her, and then like those moments, it's like, oh, this is why I do it. Yeah, because everything else around that is like, ooh, geez. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, ooh, ooh. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, well, I'll, I'll wrap it up uh, real quick. Uh, Because, you know, we're about to get our barbecue on. Uh, My moment of pleasure is Ange and Char are now watching Ted Lasso. So, and and we can talk, we can talk about our next basic, but um, I mean, yeah. My (laughs) favorite, it's my favorite new show. I'm going to watch it again, over and over again. Like, I think we are too. Makes you feel so good, but I also I cried a couple times, like happy, just warm and fuzzy. Yeah, I want him on the show, guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, let's it's have Joel McHale on first, but um, oh. yeah. Oh, 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 we got plans. Um, Bitches got plans. Yeah, we've got plans. Uh, but yeah, that's that's your basic bitch live from uh, Sacramento, LA, and Austin, Texas. <laughs> 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 and and apologies on my end for weird Wi-Fi. I, I guess this I don't know. Whatever, it's still gonna happen, right? We're in 2021. So uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.
If you like what you hear, rate and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For more information about us, you can head to bitchtalkpodcast.com. This podcast is created, hosted, and executive produced by Aaron Lim. My co-host is Angela Tabora, a.k.a. Captain Party. The show's edited by producer Shar. We're powered by GoTo Productions.